Hello, I'm May. Welcome to today's video on how to do app critique during your design interview. When I was preparing for app critique, I feel lost because there are so many apps out there. I don't know which one to start from. However, if we understand why employers use app critique to measure our skills, we can see that they are testing our design thinking process, problem solving capability, and communication skills while using an existing solution on the market. These skills sound very familiar to you, right? Um, so this is a skills that you would be using for building a successful product on the job. If you're curious about which company has app critique during interview or the interview process in general, I'll link video I made previously here. So based on this observation, I have developed a systematic approach. Start with a high level talking points, such as company vision, problem, user needs, app structure, and first impressions, then move to specific flow that focus on functionality, usability, and visual design. This approach reduces stress during the process and it shows your critical thinking skills from high level to detail. Let's start from the very beginning. During an interview, it's common for you and your interviewer to start a discussion um, to basically identify a mobile app that you both use. The interviewer may either ask you to pick one or give you a pre-selection of apps. The dialogue might go something like this. So our focus today is to have you critique a mobile app. Which app do you use often? Or it could be something like, do you use Spotify, Google Maps, or Pinterest? Typically, the mobile apps are the most popular ones. Here's a list of them. Feel free to use any of them for practice. If you come across an app you are familiar with, you could ask if it's okay to choose one that you're more familiar with. If the interviewer insists to um, explore this, um, this uncommon apps, um, don't stress either. With a systematic approach, you can ask that challenge on the spot. Make sure you come to the interview with a great preparation, um, such as update all of your popular apps to the latest versions, log in, um, and also during the interview, try to share your mobile screen using MacBooks, uh, QuickTime player. If you run into technical difficulties, so you can't share the screen, uh, make sure to guide the interviewers through your flow by telling them exactly what you're clicking on and what you're looking at. So I got positive results with or without screen share. Don't feel stressed if you can't share your screen. Okay, now we're getting to the juicy part. I'll use Pinterest as an example to introduce my method. To start, I lay the groundwork by discussing the background of problems and the app's purpose before diving into specific screens. By highlighting the value proposition, I can demonstrate my ability to see the big picture and uh, provide the design leadership. Now it becomes a habit of mine to collect um, any popular apps, visions, and the background. So when it comes to app critique, it comes handy. Also in daily conversations with your colleagues, it's kind of fun to throw this kind of information out. Here is my approach to the big picture. Designer, I often use Pinterest. The vision of Pinterest is to help people discover ideas visually and plan for their future. The platform was created to address the lack of uh, photo sharing platforms in a mood board slash collection format. While Google had an image search, people had to save the photos one by one in their local folders and then email them to their friends. What a hassle, right? Pinterest gave people a way to socially connect through visual cues, um, aka pins. Like many social media companies, um, Pinterest revenue come from uh, um, advertisement. And the popular advertisement method that Pinterest use is cost per click model. 
So advertisers launch ads on Pinterest, but I'm sure their experience is very different from a consumer's perspective. Um, in this specific app critique, um, I will talk about Pinterest from a consumer's perspective, since that's what um, I'm using Pinterest for. After laying the groundwork, your interviewers are likely engaged with the narrative that you're presenting. I am now guiding my interviewer to the app itself. Um, the critique will begin with the general impression, information hierarchy, navigation, and user group. After that, um, I will lead them to specific flow, includes functionality, usability, and visual design. Once I land on the home screen, I see many appealing images right away. Since I've been using Pinterest for a while, my homepage is curated for my interests. I find this homepage very engaging because all the images are related to my previous pins. Now I want to talk about the information hierarchy of the homepage. The main navigation is located at the bottom of the screen, which is a popular solution. By looking at the icons of the navigation, I can roughly guess that there are options for the homepage, search page, adding a pin, notifications, and my profile. On the homepage, there is a secondary navigation on the top of the page with options to browse and watch, along with a TV icon on the top left. I want to quickly mention that browse makes perfect sense. I come here to browse different images, but having watch and TV icons as separate navigation items can cause user confusion with their differences. There is a top sheet serving as a quick filter based on my pen collections, this feature is new, I think. As a visual person, I really like the efficiency behind these quick filters. The main content, which is a gallery format of image cards, is where users probably spend the most time. Pinterest has kept this format from the beginning till now, which is a great design choice. The format speaks to the vision of helping users discover ideas visually, However, I'm curious about the reasoning behind the zigzag tiles. Most Pinterest users are visual thinkers, and the different size cars create some noise around the visual alignment. I would like to run a A-B test with a small group of users to see if zigzag tile outperforms um, either same size cars that has more visual alignment or uh, one row has a uh, three for images. Now I'm clicking into a card that shows a full screen image that gives me um, some features like pin, share, and also if I keep scrolling, I can see similar pins. I would like to pause here and ask if you have any questions before we move forward. Um, my plan is to talk about a specific flow. Um, so if you have any recommendations or any flows that you would like me to go through, definitely let me know. So during the interview, I intentionally pause and ask interviewers about their questions or any flows they would like to see. I have found that doing an app critique without pausing can be very exhausting since you're talking the whole time. Taking a break um, so you can interact with your interviewers as well as double check if you're on track of what they're looking for. So the interviewers might use this chance to give you a time check and say something about uh, we're running out of time, so can you focus on the search or add a pen flow? At this point, we can jump into a more detailed flow um, that includes functionalities, usabilities, and visual design. Suppose the interviewer asks you to go through the classic route of searching. They could ask about a new feature such as um, the watch feature on the homepage. For this video, um, I'll use the search feature as an example since it is a common feature that almost all apps have. Let me dive into Pinterest search. When I click the search icon in the nav bar, I land on a page with three sections, a search bar, a carousel of uh, trending recommendations, and a collection section based on my pinned interests. I'll break down the flow into functionality, usability, and the visual design. Feel free to ask me any questions. Once I click into the search bar, I see my historical search results, which is very handy if I want to revisit some topics.
there is a delete slash close icon that is consistent throughout the page for me to quickly delete some of the topics. However, the search icon on the left and the close icon on the right create a lot of visual noise and repetition. To reduce this noise, I suggest getting rid of the search icon on the left. Um, instead, add a small image as a visual indicator and also mute the close button to make it a secondary button. Going back to the search bar, I can start typing or use the camera button um, to upload an image. I think the image match um, function is necessary because Pinterest is where I can find similar visuals. Let me type in home, then I see the majority of the search recommendations are about home ideas, um, which makes perfect sense since people come to Pinterest for idea building. However, the second result is a user account, which from a usability perspective, I don't think it is what I'm looking for when it comes to idea building. To solve this issue, um, I suggest adding a tab nav under the search bar, where the first tab is for ideas and the second tab is for user accounts. This way, user's primary goal is always addressed. If people come to find a popular account, they can click or swipe to the second tab. Also, I want to point out the search your pins feature is hiding at the bottom of the page which creates a discoverability problem. I suggest adding this item as a third tab. Now, let's see what results I get if I keep the keyword very general. After I click enter, the home result has a top filter bar, a style filter, and a popular pins about home. The top filter bar contains many items, um, and I would guess there are different level of uh, information. Um, so if I click the filter icon, it includes all pins, video boards, profiles, and products. The idea filter has a drop down that contains duplications of filters that are exposed outside. This flow can cause users to feel confused about which route is the right way to filter. To solve this issue, I would reorganize the information hierarchy to flatten the level of information on the filter. A quick idea would be to get rid of the idea filter since everything on the page is an idea. Moving on to the style section, there is an element of education embedded here that I really like. In a nutshell, I can quickly tell from the snapshot which style is uh, my personal favorite. It ties very nicely with the discoverability side of Pinterest. Um, the main content is what's popular right now, I guess, or a collection of all styles and ideas. If I don't want to commit to an idea yet, this main content could help me dive into one that catches my eyes and start pinning. In summary, um, Pinterest search flow is very user-friendly, but some information architecture appears to be a little bit messy and visual elements need some um, um, design attention and craft. Critique can be approached systematically and the structure itself can give your answer a natural flow. This is what I learned after researching app critique. There is no right or wrong way to approach app critique, so feel free to mix and match with your personal style. Um, the app critique session usually lasts about 45 minutes and is typically a discussion heavy session. Anything that can help you reduce stress and save time would be ideal. There are times when I can't even finish one flow, but it shouldn't affect your performance. During your interview, remember the framework. Start with high-level talking points such as company vision, the problem, user needs, um, and then dive into the middle session, which is um, navigation, homepage, um, then move on to specific flows, focusing on functionality, usability, and visual design. Good luck giving out the best performance on your app critique. I hope this video helps you ice the app critique with ease. If you're interested, I can create more app critiques. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and leave comment if you have questions. See you next time. Bye.